In one of the previous videos, I mentioned that the neural tube develops into the brain and the spinal cord. So now we're going to see a neural tube from its dorsal aspect. This, imagine this is the neural tube. Uh, this is the cranial end and this is the caudal end. This is the left and right side. You're looking at the neural tube from the dorsal aspect. You have to imagine that this diagram is showing a tube, okay, a tube, a hollow tube inside. So this is the cranial end, this is the caudal end. At around three weeks of age, after fertilization of the embryo, at around three weeks of age, uh, the neural tube develops three successive swellings in its cranial end. Okay. Uh, they are almost like three bubbles. So you have one bubble at the most cranial end, you have another bubble uh, just caudal to that, and you have one more bubble just caudal to that, and the remaining part remains as the tube. So these three are the most primitive brain vesicles. Uh, by the word vesicle, we mean bubble. And these three are termed as the prosencephalon, the mesencephalon, and the rhombencephalon. Okay, the words are a little bit confusing. They are Greek words. It just means, prosencephalon means the forebrain, forebrain, F-O-R-E, forebrain. Mesencephalon, the word means midbrain. And rhombencephalon, the word actually means rhombic brain, but uh, we can understand that as hindbrain, hindbrain. So this is the forebrain, this is the midbrain, and this is the hindbrain. Okay, the prosencephalon, mesencephalon, and the rhombencephalon, and this occurs at three weeks of age. Now, what happens to these three vesicles? The remaining part remains as a tube. That's also important. Uh, this uh, this is occurring at the age of three weeks. Now. After a while, at around five weeks, at around five weeks of age, these three will evolve, evolve into five brain vesicles. Okay, five brain vesicles. Uh, these terms are more complex, but let's learn that systematically. Uh, you have a diencephalon in the middle. Okay, dia the word means between. Okay, I'll I tell why that is called between. And you have two enormous telencephalic vesicles. Okay, telencephalic vesicles. So you have two telencephalons, okay, telencephalons, and you have one midline diencephalon. Okay. These three vesicles are developing from, they are evolving from the prosencephalon. This is very, very important. The, so the forebrain or the prosencephalon develops into two telencephalic vesicles and the midline diencephalic vesicle okay so though i told you the words so you have to you have to try to learn the meaning of the words of these greek words telo the word means end just like you have telomeres at the end of the chromosome so this the word means end brain so if you imagine these are the brain vesicles at the most cranial end you have the telencephalon and between the two telencephalons, I told you this is the left and this is the right side. Between the two telencephalons, you have a midline diencephalon. The word dia means between. Uh, you can remember diaphysis, it means between two physes of a bone. So anything that is between, we tend to call it with the uh, uh, prefix dia. So you have two telencephalic, the prosencephalon develops into two enormous telencephalic vesicles and the midline diencephalic vesicle. Okay, and these three are uh, derivatives of the prosencephalon. Now what happens to the next mesencephalon? The mesencephalon will remain as such, and that's fortunate, okay? It remains as such, it is uh, mesencephalon, so that will remain as such. It remains as such, that's the mesencephalon. Next, the rhombencephalon or the hindbrain develops into two brain vesicles, okay? Let's know the names of these. You have a more cranial metencephalon. I'll write that with MT, okay, metencephalon, and a more caudal myelencephalon, myelencephalon that uh, I'll write with MY. Yeah. So rhombencephalon develops into the metencephalon and the myelencephalon. Okay. 
So you can see how the three brain vesicles develops into five brain vesicles at the fifth week. And again, it's very important to note that the remaining part will remain as the tube itself. Okay. So at five weeks, uh, our central nervous system is almost like this. So I, I'm sure that you might be getting a bit confused by all these terms, but if you know these terms, it's very easy to understand the overview of the brain. Okay. So now I'll go to the adult anatomy and just tell you what, what are the counterparts of the adult human brain uh, with these esoteric terms. Okay. The teal encephalon corresponds to the cerebrum of the brain. Cerebrum. Cerebrum is the uh, volumetrically the most largest part of the entire brain and so those are the steel encephalon that's why I mentioned that these two bubbles are really gigantic uh, compared to the other smaller bubbles and between that you have the diencephalon so teal encephalon the corresponds to the cerebrum and the diencephalon corresponds to anything that that you have the word thalamus that's re that's really helpful the thalamus on both sides, okay, they are very close in the midline of the brain and the hypothalamus, the epithalamus, all these are derivatives of the diencephalon. So you can remember anything with a thalamus, it corresponds to the diencephalon. Midbrain is again fortunate, it is called midbrain in adult anatomy. The metencephalon develops into the pons and the cerebellum. The pons will be in the front and the cerebellum will be behind. But both of these are derivatives of the metencephalon. The myelencephalon corresponds to the medulla oblongata. So these are the adult counterparts of each of these brain vesicles and the rest of the neural tube corresponds to the spinal cord. All right. So these are the derivatives. This, this is how the neural tube derives into the brain and the spinal cord. 